So today's topic, of course, is the new features in the new Navisworks integration inside of BIM 360 Coordinate. So of course, with the BIM 360 platform, it is made up of many different tools, document management, design collaboration, and then of course is BIM 360 Build, which then has all the quality and safety and meeting minutes and assets and constructability and RFIs and submittals. And of course, today we're talking about the coordination module. And that's been out for quite some time now, but there's been some nice um, additions that have been added to the product in the past couple of months here. So kind of starting first here with the main product itself, the model coordination enhancements, is the ability to filter the clash matrix here. So this was a nice tool. It, it showed you the kind of hot spots. It was like a heat map, the dark or the color, the more clashes you would have between the different models. But it was still kind of hard to find the clashes, meaning, okay, I need to look at the, the matrix and kind of run my eye down the left side. Okay, where's my structural model? Let me run it across the bottom and try to find the MEP model that I want to you know, basically clash with. And you could do it, but it wasn't the most easy, th most easy thing to do, not the easiest thing to do there. So now you can choose an appropriate view or just ba basically be able to pick the models that you'd like to see the heat map here for, or even just pick a particular um, view if necessary that you've already created to make it a little bit easier. So if we go ahead and jump over here to the actual software. So in the main view here, of course, I have my coordination space. I've created a folder here. I have my master coordination model where I've created all my 3D views. In this case, what I've done this little kind of side trick here is if you do have access to model coordination, or I should say design coordination, BIM 360 design, then what you can do is you can drop all your models in another folder that are coming in from your consultant, or if you're in your own BIM 360 hub, then it makes it even easier. But you could have another folder that you could even have an outside person that given a docs license to that they're uploading models to. And what I've done here is using BIM 360 design, I created just an empty um, auto, empty Revit file. And in that empty Revit file, I, cre I linked in all the other models into it, whether they be manually uploaded models or I'm using live linked models directly into this. That way they're flashing models always up to date. And then inside of that Revit model itself, I've simply created my clashing views. I have an architecture view, for instance, here. I have a ducts only view, an electrical view, an HVAC equipment view, every, everything MEP view, a, a view that just shows MEP and structure together. This is, and there's other reasons why I've done that, a plain old structure view here. And of course, I've saved this view and published it. I've created my publish set, which is what you always have to do anyway, is to create, um, under collaboration here in the published settings, you have to create your set because that's what the BIM 360 collaboration tool is using these different views, right? So to make that a little bit easier, like I said, is I have an empty file here that I link in the model so that I only have to create these 3D views once. I'm not dependent upon anyone else to create the views for me. All I need is the raw models that I just link into here and it's, it works out very well. And then I just publish this whenever I want to update the models in the coordination space. It takes two seconds to do that. And if you're in design, you don't even have to open the software. You can do that directly from um, the BIM 360 design interface and have it update all the latest models. So that's a little side trick there just to get things ready. So back inside the software here, if I go now over to my model coordination, And then we can go over to the clash matrix. This is the way it's always been here where it shows you all the models across the top and bottom and what's clashing. And the darker the color means that there are more clashes. You can see 204, 228 are fairly dark where one, you know, three, five here, very light colored because there's only a few clashes there. But it was still kind of hard to kind of pick the one you want and go across here and try to correlate it with one of the vertical ones. So what you can now do here is come in and you can either, you can select the model. So I can hide all and say, well, I really only care about the clashes between the ducts and the structure right now. And I'll apply that. So now it's very easy to find exactly what I want. So what am I using to lead this? Is it 
The structural elements are the ducts. The ducts typically have to move, so I'm going to select that. They'll become the leading element. So again, as you see, it just becomes much easier to jump specifically to you know, the particular clashes that you're going to need. Isn't it? So I can get to it in seconds instead of trying to visualize that and go through it. That was always kind of a pain. Let me just move my WebEx bar here because in my way as usual. There we go. So again, that was the first enhancement is the ability just to filter this list by very specific models that you want to look for, maybe electrical um, and so on there in equipment. And I'll apply that. So these are the only things that I personally care about, about what I need to basically do clashing about, or I just want to make it easier to select. So that's that first new assignment, new setting here. Another thing here is instead of doing it this way, you could select any of the views you created. So for instance, I created a view called duct versus electrical versus structure. It's just the name of the view I gave it. So it isolates the models that are in that group. Or I can get down here to structure MEP and electrical and isolate the models in that group. So this is actually quite a huge enhancement to this page. The page in itself was good, but it was still hard to get down to exactly what you wanted. This, on the other hand, now really gives a lot of power to this page. It's very easy to isolate the, the view to just the things that you need to be looking at right now. Maybe you're an electrical contractor and all you care about is the conduits and cable trays and how they're interfering with any of the structure in the project or even any of the duct work too, right? Any of those things. It just allows you, as focusing on that particular trade, let's just say, to get to just what you need to see at any given time. So again, really powerful tool here. So I'm really very glad that they added that to me. It's one of my more favorite little additions here. That was always, the only thing I disliked about that page was just trying to visualize and trying to find what I needed there. Much easier to do. Another thing here is the selective model clash, clash review is the when you're actually doing the clashes, the ability to choose which models to clash with right away, the review clashes in context of other models, including access to other object properties. You have access to all the properties, of course, in this view. So again, when we're going into model coordination, oh, wrong product, that's Revit there. When we're going into you know, the BIM 360 environment here, and I actually go to the clashes. So let's say I go to one of my clash views instead here. So I'm going to go back to models here, and then I can, or I can go to views, and I could just look at my, you know, structural MEP or just whatever view I basically want to look at here. So let's say MEP and structure, or any of those. We'll just pick all three here. So now I'm in that specific view. I can look at my clashes, and I can set right here what my primary model is. So typically the primary model to me is what's gonna have to move when we finally do these clashes, right? What is the thing that's moving? And the one thing that's almost never moving is gonna be the structure. Usually it's the MEP and other things that kind of need to go around that in most cases. So in this case, I'm gonna start from the viewpoint of the ductwork, what ductwork will have to move in order to accommodate let's say the structural issues. Now in this case, I don't care about clashes with electrical right now, so I could also turn that off, which is now what I can do here. Now we've kind of always had that ability to pick the primary model, but now, especially when we have more than just two models in this environment, while we're in the view, I could temporarily turn off electrical and just focus on the structure in the duct clashes at the moment. So now I'm gonna go through here, and start looking at the elements, of course. Now, this is another prime example. Well, this is flexible duct. Well, let's take a look at the clash issue here. And that's pretty minimal. It, it, it's flexible duct. You just push it over an inch. That's the whole point of flexible duct is that you don't have to worry about this type of thing. So what am I gonna do here? I'm just gonna simply take that clash. It's not an issue. And the reason is the atom can flex. Done. So that's no longer a clash that's active. It's no longer an active clash. I've gotten rid of that. And now I can start again going through the rest of the clashes. And then, okay, I've figured out all the structural stuff. It's done. So now what I want to do instead is I'm going to take the duct work and I'm going to do that by electrical here instead. 
So now I want to see, is any of my duct work clashing with any of the electrical? Good news, there aren't any issues. Perfect. So now I've cleared all those. Yet again, I still had this one view here that I was able to go to, but because now I can go in and selectively just turn off things I don't care about right away, it makes it a lot easier to kind of control these views, filter them, get to exactly what you need in a very timely manner. So again, huge benefit right here. Really like that these little minor changes are honestly more exciting than when the product comes out. For instance, when model coordination came out, it was nice, had some good features, but it was a little cumbersome. I actually get more excited about the enhancements because typically the enhancements are really from the people have used it for a while, you the users have used it for a while, suggested Autodesk workflow changes, and they make those workflow changes. So usually when the new features come out, that's what excites me because that's usually fixing a problem or something I didn't like about the original software in its first iteration. And again, that's the beauty of the cloud-based technology is that instead of having to wait for a yearly release cycle, Autodesk can release these fixes as they come. And that's a huge advantage here of cloud-based technology. There's just simply no software to maintain anymore. All right, let's move on to some other exciting changes here. So in a way they seem minor, but to me, these are huge workflow changes. They drastically increase the speed at which I can identify appropriate clashes and get them assigned to people to get them resolved. So that right there is probably doubled, if not tripled the speed um, that I can get these things done with. Now, another big thing here, and really in many respects is a game changer also, is the integration of Navisworks with BIM 360 model coordination. So this really is the best of both solutions here. So we can still use BIM 360 coordinate to do the discipline trade self-checking. So now early on during the pre-construction or the even the design phase, right? As the trades are working together with this tool, they're able to make sure that their objects are as coordinated as possible, at least during the design intent stage. There's always gonna be realities of the real world when you get in the field, but this is gonna be pretty good to pre-avoid you know, most of the major issues and hopefully only the remaining clashes will be relatively minor. But now we can also say, we can also include in the same process specific class checking and using 4D simulation in Navisworks, yet still keep all the data in the cloud, again, keeping that central source of truth. And that's the main intent of BIM 360 of all the features is a central source of truth. All the data is in one place with version control. And ultimately, no matter which of the tools we're using in the BIM 360 world, that is the ultimate goal. All data, one place, do something once, not six times. And again, re regardless as to which way you identify the clashes, whether you're in BIM 360 and find a clash and assign it to someone, or you're in Navisworks using the model in BIM 360, finding a clash and assigning it to someone, again using the same mechanism so we're using one unified issue management tool spanning every product in the bim 360 solution and now being expanded into navisworks so any issues found in navisworks will now be seen directly in bim 360 in context this is a huge advancement just a, seems like such a simple little plug-in and it really is so much more it's a game changer in my opinion so with the new integration, so you have to go to the, I should have put a slide in here, I forgot to do that, my apologies there. Go to the Autodesk app store, and that's where you will find the, the issue integration with Navisworks for BIM 360. Now be careful, there's an older one that is for the classic BIM 360 glue. That's not the one you'd be using. You wanna make sure you're using the Navisworks one. The, the latest one, I think it came out in September would be the date on it, and that would be in the, um, the app store. It's an Autodesk product, it's free of course. They just place it in the app store to get it, uh, to make it easy for you to get. So again, what this tool allows me to do is using model coordination. So I'm still held by the same rules, meaning I'm using model coordination. I've done what I've showed you where I put my, my Revit model into the coordination space. And again, be aware that 
with BIM 360 model coordination, it is limited, again, to Revit models, AutoCAD 3D, and IFC. And then with the IFC, it's really only compatible with three types of IFC, which is ArchiCAD, MagicCAD, and Tecla, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure if MagicCAD is the right one there. But Tecla and ArchiCAD are definitely supported, but those are the only types of IFC. So it's not just all IFC, it's just those three. So just be aware of that. Now, Navisworks, on the other hand, by itself, can actually access like 50 different, 60 different um, file formats. So you are limited if you're going to be using Navisworks in this environment to the ones that model coordination is being um, is supporting. So I would open Navisworks. Maybe I'm not even doing any clashes of model coordination. The only thing I've done is I have created the coordination space, and we've and I've uploaded my models into the coordination space so that they can be seen, of course. So then in Navisworks, I can actually open those models and combine them in Navisworks, but directly from the cloud. So I have the Navisworks software sitting on my machine, but all the models that I'm pulling in are still living in the cloud. So again, it allows me to open models from BIM 360. I can switch between coordination space, then open all the models or views. I can search and filter for custom selection. And again, this integration ensures that all the people were all working on the same model, even if we're using the desktop application or just a web application. So again, this is a quite a game changer in my personal opinion here. And it also unifies the BIM 360 issues. So again, here, issues created in Navisworks are associated with the model in the coordination space on the cloud. So Revit, DWG, or IFC, as I mentioned before. So even though we create the issue in Navisworks, we're using the same issue tool, the same issue management tool, and we see and can go to that issue inside of BIM 360. So you don't even have to be a Navisworks user as long as you have access to the coordination spaces, you can great get to those issues. In fact, if you're a docs user and all you have is docs, because issues are unified across all BIM 360 tools and now Navisworks, you can still see the clash in context. And I'll talk about that in the live demo here. But again, issues are consistent and available through any of the BIM 360 clients. And when I say the client there, that means again, design, docs, build, coordinate, it's all there. So again, and you can see this in all of those tools, the dashboards, even the forge development, if you wanna use that, if you have programming there, reporting, meeting minutes, all those things can be incorporated into these issues. And as this is now public, publicly known news, there's a, a Revit issues add-in that's in beta right now. So we'll be able to see these issues in Revit to fix them. This is the huge thing right here. When this gets out of beta, and again, you can sign up to use it if you want, but just don't use it in a real production environment. It's not guaranteed. But I'd be able to, in Navisworks or Coordinate, find an issue. With a, with a duct or something like that, or whatever needs to be moved. And then directly in the authoring software, Revit, I would be able to see that issue, see the element and fix it. So now we're really creating that central source of truth so where everything is gonna be fully integrated here. But that's still in beta right now. I'm not sure when its final release will be made and what it is, you'll be notified in your BIM 360 sites that it's available. And again, as I mentioned before, you can view, edit, create issues directly in BIM 360 through this tool. And if you create them in the BIM 360, you can see them in Navisworks. So it's fully bi-directional. You do all the same edits you would normally do for creating an issue. It is the same issue tool. And just like the, BIM, the newer tool that they've added to um, coordination a, a few months ago, Whenever you now create your clashes, it automatically screenshots that, the same inside of Navisworks. And the trick here is I always recommend it, mark it up first, then create the issue, because if you do that, when it does the screen grab, it will include the markups that you've done in Navisworks as well. So that's huge, because this allows the non-coordinator coordinate users, say you, you just have access to Docs, you don't have access to BIM 360 coordinate, 
So although you'll be able to see the issue and it'll even take you to one of the reference models if you have access to the folder, it may not show the clash in context. It may only take you into the duct work and you see the duct, but you don't see the context being the structure there. Well, because when you create an issue either in Coordinate or Navisworks using this add-in, um, it will automatically create the screen cap for you of the duct or the clash in the context, which is huge. That way, anyone who has issues or access to issues, which is basically just a very inexpensive docs license, can see it in context. And that is huge to me. So let's kind of jump back into you know, the software here and look at how this is working. So the first thing, of course, is that you still have to create your coordination space right here, and you still have to up, you know, upload your models. So you have to take your, your Revit model, your AutoCAD models, whatever, upload them into whatever folder you're using that you've designated inside of model coordination as the um, model there. So here's my coordination uh, model folder right here, and I just created a Revit model as we saw earlier, master coordination model, and I created my 3D views so that when you open the Revit model or the AutoCAD files or the IFC files you up here, you'll just see those 3D views, right? And that's it. Now, now at this point, I can do clash detection inside of the software model coordinate, or I could just not even use do any clashes in the tool. I want to do all my clash coordination in Navisworks because I like Navisworks because not only will it show me the hard clashes, it'll also show me tolerances. And there's a few, and I also want to link it into my 4D scheduling and things like that. And I, but I want that central source of truth. So I use the half of model coordinate to control the coordination space in the 3D views but I don't use, or I can use it in conjunction with at the same time or just separately. So now I've just got my 3D views up there. So then I would open up Navisworks. Now be aware that when you add some plugins in, there's two different types of plugins. There is a BIM 360 glue plugin here. There's also, I think another issue one there for that, but again, this is not the right one. This is for glue, that's the old software years ago. We're looking at coordination now. And now there's a coordination tab, and here's an open models button, and I can open models. So this will allow me to open that model you know, directly from the cloud. So now it's gonna go into my project. I have to pick the project that I'm working with, so I need to go to the, the right hub here. So I'll go into my Imagine It Hub. It'll show me the projects that I have access to, my food mart here. Then I can see the different coordination spaces that are in the model. There's only one coordination space. Now, the only caveat with this tool that I've really been able to come up with is that this is where you have to make the decision as to what models are gonna be included in this because once you create this model, you cannot append models into it later. You'd have to recreate it, okay? So for instance, today, oh, I'm just gonna include ducts and structure, right? And if I do that, that's fine. But if tomorrow, oh, I also want to add electrical. Well, I can't just add electrical. What I'll have to do is do what we're doing here, but create a new model, including electrical. So I really recommend that if you have a number of models in there, pick them all. Because in Navisworks, it's then very easy to filter out the ones you don't want to see at that moment, right? So my recommendation is if you're going to be using the Navisworks integration, Make sure that you put all the models in there. Maybe the semi placeholders where there's not much there yet, doesn't matter. Create the 3D views, at least if the 3D views are there as elements pop into them, then they'll just populate here. So that's the only caveat here is that you can only do this once at the beginning. It doesn't mean you can't create another model and then include everything in it, but it just won't be the same or connected to the other one, right? So just be aware of that. So in this case, you know, I want to pick everything or at least all the models that are going to be in that particular view. Now you can filter here, hey, the ones I don't want, you can look for certain ones if you have a lot of views, for instance. But in this case, I'm just going to pick them all, hit open. And now it's basically creating my NWF, my Navisworks file set here. And it's bringing in and caching. So essentially the files in the BIM 360 coordinate are like the NWC files now. 
So again, it may take a minute here because it's got to go through and process all the models. That's what it's doing, as you can see. We're at oh, 28, 30% right now, just about. So it's just like you would create any other Navisworks file. You would just link in all your models. In this case, though, you are limited to just the ones you saw in model coordination there, which are those three file formats, Revit, AutoCAD, and IFC. Again, it will take a few seconds here to finish this. It's almost done. We're already 80%. And there we go. So now I have all these models that are living in the cloud, but yet I'm using Navisworks the way I've already, I've been using Navisworks for 10 years and I like the way it works and that's great. Nothing wrong with that. It's a great tool still. It's a great clash detection tool. It's quite amazing in fact, very powerful. So right here, I can set up all my standard views. So now you'll need to go through the process of creating your different views and turning on or off the things you don't want, right? That's pretty much standard, same process. And then when you're done, I wanna save this so I can open it tomorrow and continue working or just check the clashes once a day. Take this model, save as, and using the desktop connector, I can save the Navisworks file type in the same folder, which is what I would recommend in the cloud. So over here, I would go save as, I would use my desktop connector here, BIM 360, my hub, my project, my coordination model. I can see that there's already one in there and I could just leave this as untitled. Let's leave it as untitled for now and save it. So now I've saved the model in the cloud. I'm working completely off the cloud in Navisworks. And now anyone who has access to model coordination and has Navisworks installed locally can now open this file set and get directly in it. So I wanna close, I wanna open up one of my other completed ones here. So here's the one, that's my official one. So I'll go ahead and I'll open up that. So now I'm opening up a file set I worked on a few weeks ago, or anyone can. Anyone who has access to that folder, read write access to that folder can do this, which is great. So I can still keep all the information in a central repository Yet I can have different firms using Navisworks and pull the information in or see all the same clashes that I see. And I can set up the clashing results. We can work on them together. We can assign them to each other together. It's an amazing tool. So now I've opened up basically the same model, except this is when I saved earlier, where I already have my, you know, my, my views cleaned up so I can go to each of the different views and so on here. So I have MEP versus structure as a view that I created. And then of course, if I go up to my clash detective here, let me push pin that in there and I'll pull this over and I'll rerun the test just because it needs to be rerun because there have been changes in the model. And here are all my clashes. Just like I was using regular Navisworks, there's no difference here. So I still use Navisworks in the way I've always used it, which is great. It's wonderful, much, much easier to work with. So now I can come in here and I could, you know, reorient my view just to make it a little bit easier to see. And now before I actually create the clash marker and things like that, I'm gonna go into review here and I'm gonna just put a um, arrow in here. Let's see text, where's my little arrow tool there? And, oh, there it is, draw. And I'm just gonna draw in Oops, I always do that backwards. And here to here, there we go. And then I'll go ahead and use some text here. And need to move duct here. We'll put that little note in. Okay, so now that I have the note in and everything in here, on the right side, let me just turn off the view there and turn on the BIM 360 issues. And again, let's pull it over so I can see it a little bit better. That's clear. So here's my clash, the way I would like it seen. And just like if you were in BIM 360, create an issue. Click the location to place the push pin right there. What type of issue is this? Well, it's a coordination issue and it's a clash. And I can say duct column clash. As my name 
I can assign this to someone to get it fixed. So I go through the list here and I look for my MEP consultant designer that I'm working with. John Jones here, he needs to fix that. I really need this fixed by, oh, let's just be nice, let's go Wednesday of next week. Let's go to the location of this. And this is maybe in the plenum space. So we've that designated location, all the same things you do inside of BIM 360 docs or design or anytime you're creating an issue. And what's the other issue here? And I can go through and again, I can just say, you know, this is just what the root cause of this issue is, right? So let's see what I have here. So maybe it's a design and it's a documentation conflict. It was not shown like this on the plan. Something's wrong. And what type of clash? Well, this is a clash with what's the main clash type mechanical, let's call it. And then I hit create. So it takes a little second here because not only is it creating it here, it's now communicating with the model in 3D in BIM 360. So now that issue has been created. And here's another issue that I had created earlier. And again, that was with something that's actually been resolved. So I can say that that one was resolved. Again, I can go to other items here that have been clashed with and so on there. But again, I want to go back to my main one right here. So there's my main clash. I've done this in Navisworks. I can save this so I you know, save everything I've done here. I can get out of my um, clash detective if necessary. Just go to my saved viewpoints, go back over here in master, master coordination one. And notice here, see I can click on these. Whoops, I'm still in the wrong mode there. Sorry about that. Select, there we go. And I can click on the clashes and it kind of just identifies that if I pick on it there, takes me to it if I have my BIM 360 tab here open, see how it took me to that clash. And if I pick this one over here, it takes me to class 385 and so on. Now, if I go back inside of model coordination, out here, there's that untitled one I put up here. There's the one I just saved, which became version 10. Every time you save it, it does become a new version. So that's version 10. It was saved right now at 134 my time. And if I look at the issues, so these are all the issues. Anyone who has docs has access to this. There is the latest issue, 407. I can see when it was due, when it was created. And notice here, attachments. And what's in the attachment? A snapshot of the issue I created in Navisworks, including the markup, because I did the markup before I put the push pin in. This is huge. Now I have context as to where this issue is, um, what's clashing with it, which I can see is the, is the column here. So now that I have this information, I can also here Oh, I see that this is in the master coordination document. Well, let me select that. As long as I have access to this folder, I can see that here. And it's going to take me to the issue, which is this duct right here. Now, if I look at that duct, I can get properties for it here. And I see right here that I can get the properties for that. So I know what basic number that is. Let me just pull this over here so you can see it a little bit better. So right here, I can grab that number, which is the ID number of the object and copy that, right? So this is only showing me the context in just the ductwork. I don't see what it's mixed with. And this is why I always create in my Navisworks views, if I go back over here, and I, not Navisworks views, I'm sorry, my document management views here. I always create a combined view with like MEP and structure or something like that. So I know that someone could then come in here Go into that coordination model right here because they have that number I showed you, right? The number of the object that was clashing with. They can come in here, pick this view, MEP and structure, right? And they're able to use the model explore browser here to look for that number. So you can paste that number if I didn't copy it there. Did I put it in? I guess I did not, but I copied it in right. But I can put that number in here and then search for that element in this plan in this model and then see it in the context here. I could also use that same number to search for it in Revit and then fix it in Revit too, right? So that's the whole point of having those ID numbers, right? Is that you can go into Revit, search the ID number, find the object and fix it. 
And that's basically how the unified tools would work. The old BIM 360 Blue, you could go into the Navisworks, your Revit model, and find it would just do this automatically linked to the issue um, because it was using that number, that ID number that you have. So wherever that is, I'll be able to see that, you know, in this particular view here. And in this view here, I can even go in right now. Here's his 407, right? Which again will take me to that. So I don't think I actually copied it properly here. I want to make sure that when I do this, let's see if I can copy it this time. And then try going to the other view. Sometimes my copy and paste does some weird things here in when I'm doing a WebEx, and that's usually what the issue is. Let's see if it worked this time. Yes, yeah, having some issues. Usually it's my go to meeting messes this up. But again, if I had that number, I'd be able to go in here and you know find the element, but see it in the context because now I'm in a view that has structure and um, the MEP in it. But again, just by looking at the issue itself is going to allow you to, like I said, see it in context because the issue itself will always and automatically have the attachment here, which pulls that information in. So that's what's beautiful about this is the fact that I can kind of have this bi-directional way of working with issues, but also use Navisworks. And again, because I'm using Navisworks, one, I'm keeping the file set, all that data in the cloud, so it's all in one place. Because this is Navisworks, now I have access to all the other tools in Navisworks, so whether it be animations or using the timeliner tool to look at the construction schedule and all those other things and the building being virtual built based on the Gantt chart schedule and so on. So again, huge way of now fully integrating Navisworks almost into the BIM 360. Actually, the only limitation really is just the file types are now limited to just the ones model coordination uses. But you're still using, again, model coordination as that kind of live tool here to kind of manage all of that. And again, like I was saying, so you can save those NWF files right in the cloud. So everyone can get to them based on the permission you give to the folder, of course. Only people who are supposed to be able to go in there will be able to get these. And again, if you want any more information on any of the construction products from Autodesk and really any of the BIM 360, which is not just construction, but um, a lot of them are focused that way. Um, you can go to our website here, resources.imaginit.com slash construction. They can look up that information. 